So, he bros and she bros, welcome to the channel. This is Oil Field Disciple, and we are cruising with Jesus. Um, got a few things I got on my heart. I've been, uh, been studying through, working through over the last couple of days. Um, and it's something that I believe will be a, an in depth study and teaching. Um, Shabbat uh, for the assembly and for you guys here on. YouTube and, and those who, who follow me on Facebook. Uh, the Lord is, has given me a, a blessed gift over the last, I want to say about nine years now. It's been a, it's been a blessing and I don't want to say a cursing, but it's been a, a, a tribulation, a trial um, that um, it's painted a target on my back for sure, uh, because this gift that the Lord has given me of, of seeking truth and being given the revelation of truth through the the sea of lies that are that are that are amongst our world today. Everything that we we see and and comprehend, we're indoctrinated with with fallacy and lie. And the only ladder out of that sea of lies, the only uh, ark, let's say, boat out of that sea of lies that is this world that that Yahweh tells us um, to love the world is enmity with him to love the things of this world is enmity with him so the only ladder out of all that sea of lies of indoctrination that we have um, instituted in um, our social our, our political our economical um, our, our religious institutes today which are all fallacies and lies um, outside of the the few um, small arcs of truth um, who call themselves a church uh, and have true pastors that teach the word of truth and walk in the word of truth um, is the word of God is his word um, it is the only thing that can keep us grounded in truth. And so, one thing, one, one comment yesterday on Facebook uh, solidified this for me. Um, how I've been wanting to say it. Um, the direction I wanted to come at it. In the manner that today's Christianity, religiosity, churchianity has it in their mind that the law has been done away with, but not all the law, just the parts that they disagree with. I've been told that, um, well, the the ceremonial laws have all been done away with. The, the 613 Levitical laws, they've all been done away with. Um, we're keeping the law of shall not kill, shall not steal, shall not lie, which lie is not one of the commandments. Um, bearing false witness against your neighbor. Um, anyway, uh, going to get off track here. The comment was... One of my brothers had um, wrote up a post and showed that through scripture, um, celebrating these um, evil worldly holidays of Christmas and Easter and Halloween uh, are an abomination to the Lord. And it is. Uh, according to Jeremiah 10, it says, I hate. God says, I hate your festivals and your feasts. Um, that's referring to the, the 
pagan holidays that were that celebrated in this world today. I hate them, the Lord says. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm going to get on that one too here for too long and show how how the Lord abhors those who celebrate Christmas and Easter and Halloween, uh, which is a complete abomination to him, he says. Like I said, I'm going to get on that one here shortly. And uh, you're going to have a choice. Um, through my studies today, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, brought to light to me the way the today's churchianity has, has misread Paul and Paul's under a major attack right now um, I know of one big channel that had tens of thousands of followers um, well let's just say it, the Christian truthers uh, Jason who led that uh, began seeking out and studying Paul's writings and wound up dismissing Paul as, as an apostle um, and in the end result he wound up dismissing Yeshua Yahshua um, our Messiah Jesus um, as a actual individual and dismissing Jesus altogether now he's, he's completely went off the rails uh, all because he doesn't understand the writings of Paul and the Christian church has done the same thing. And um, 2 Corinthians 3, 14 through 17, is talking about the blindness of those who claim to follow Jesus, who claim to be believers, but they're still blinded, just as the veil of, of Moses, when he went into the, the temple, would wear a veil would go into the veil, sorry, would go into the veil uh, where the people couldn't see and then he would come out and give the commands. That's Exodus 34, 34. Um, but it speaks of the old law of Moses in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14 through 17. And it says it's done away with. Those words are used, but in correct reading in context it's not the Moses law that's done away with it's the veil that blinds that is done away with um, so it's not the law done away with um, Yahshua Matthew 5 17 through 19 um, I come not to destroy I come not to do away with I come not to abolish the Torah and the prophets, but to fulfill the Torah and the prophets. Fulfill. To be the embodiment. To be, to become the living example of truth and standard of Yahweh. Not to end it. Not to do away with it but to become it as an example. We are to become more and more like the Son day by day. What does that mean? What did Jesus do? He kept the law fully, right? If he ended the law, why even teach on it? Why not just show up, say, hey, you guys can do it however you want. God doesn't have a standard no more. Don't worry about none of it. The killing part, the stealing part, the um, loving God with all your heart part, do away with it. Because Paul's going to come along in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, and say that I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. And that was the um, response to my brother's post yesterday about the the pagan wicked holidays world holidays that we celebrate that was his response this covers all of that we can do it because this scripture covers it well if that's if that's how we read that how about i can do all things in christ who strengthens me i can i can kill i can steal i can 
um, cheat on my wife. I can cheat on my taxes. I can rob. I can tell God to go jump in a lake. I can do all these things in Christ. He strengthens me, right? Now I'm going to do in-depth. We're going to go in-depth on this Shabbat. This, this Shabbat. And we're going to look at it. Paul's, Paul's thorn. We're going to look at what grace means. Because I don't think we fully understand the concept of grace. Grace is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to influence our heart. To either choose or reject Messiah. Ephesians 2 and 8. Come on, let's go back to it. We are saved by grace through faith. Faith, per Hebrews 11, 6, is the only thing that pleases God. And the only way we get faith, Romans 10, 17, is by the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Check it out. Let's keep going. Jesus in Matthew 4, 4 says not by bread alone, but by every word. Every word increases our faith, pleasing God. In John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. Okay, the word is defined as commands in the Torah. And then he walks it out in the Gospels. And Paul explains to you what it is to be that living follower of Messiah. That's why his letters are so prevalent in the New Testament. He's living it out. He's going through trials, tribulation, problems, issues, just like me and you go through. But he goes through it because the grace empowers him. My grace is sufficient. Well, if your grace is sufficient, then I'll glory in my infirmities, my trials, my tribulations, my corrections from you, Lord, my rebukes from you, Lord. Okay, you can find all this in, in 2 Corinthians, um, what is it, 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, <coughs> uh, verse, I think it's 7 through 12, 7 through 11, something like that. That's Paul's form. Right? Okay. Okay. Jesus comes to, to Peter after he's been crucified and tells Peter, feed my sheep. Shepherd. At first he says, feed my lambs. John chapter 21. Feed my lambs. Shepherd my sheep. And feed my sheep. What is Yeshua telling him? Feed my lambs. I'm fixing to send you to the Gentiles. Per Acts chapter 10. Do not call unclean what I've called clean. I need you to go and talk to the Gentiles that you are commanded according to the Jewish handwritten law as done away with in, in Colossians chapter 2 that it was nailed to the cross man's handwritten law I need you to go to these people that you're supposed to have nothing to do with because don't you call them unclean I've called them ready for the word of God and feed them that's the food of the sheep that comes down like a scroll. Jesus is not telling Paul or Peter, you can go eat shrimp and lobster and bacon and, and, and anything else unclean that I've already called Leviticus 11 an abomination. God's not going to change his mind. It once was an abomination and now it's not. Jesus is not going to come and change the law. He would destroy Malachi. And that would have to be destroyed. Malachi would be no longer valid. 
the Torah would be no longer valid because Jesus, the Word, has now just broken himself. Okay. This concept of the law is done away with is your concept of lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Grace is accompanied with mercy. By doing so, when we break God's standard, because according to Romans 6, 23, the wage of sin is death. Sin defined in 1 John 3, 4, still New Testament, sin is breaking God's law. Matthew 7, 23, Jesus says, depart from me. I don't know you. You are a lawbreaker. You were told to follow the law and you rejected it. So Philippians 4, 13 allows us to do whatever we want, according to Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 14 to 17 Paul reiterates what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17 to 19 that the law is done away with. 1 John, the dude that wrote that one, he don't know what he's talking about because sin is breaking the law and the law is done away with. We have no law. How can we break it? How can we break what is no longer there? Are you starting to get the concept of God is a standard? He corrects and rebukes those he loves. Okay, now let's go back to John 21. Jesus says, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, Jonah. What does it mean to be called son of? If you are the son of, then you are to be the representation and follower of that. And so if Peter's the son of Jonah, what did Jonah do? Jonah taught and went and preached repentance to the Ninevites, right? What is Jesus telling Peter in John chapter 21? Go and teach repentance to my lambs, the Gentiles, so that they can come in and be in the sheepfold so that you can shepherd my sheep And as you shepherd my sheep, you can feed my sheep with the word of Yahweh. Every word proceeding from the mouth of God. All of it. Hmm. We're we, we going to hit down on this Shabbat. You're not going to want to miss it. Yahweh has, has been impressing upon me and I keep wondering why and why do I got to keep going back to teaching the law? Why is it so freaking complicated for people to get that Yahweh is a standard? That grace is not our empowerment to be wicked heathens. And he regards any sin as disgusting and vile, like a rotting, bloated dog in the streets. The simplest of sins. And if we continue to transgress his law and stomp on the blood of Yeshua at the cross, Matthew 7, 23 is what we have to look forward to come judgment day. And I'm trying to save y'all from that. I'm trying to get y'all to wake up and open your eyes. You're blind. You've been blinded by indoctrination. Some of you have come out of some of this indoctrination, but you refuse to come out of the other indoctrinations, the religious indoctrination. Let go of it all. As Peter had to be completely rebuilt from the ground up, after Jesus met him at the road to Damascus, 
Peter had to be completely rebuilt from the ground up after denying Yeshua. Come out of her, my people, lest you partake in her plagues, mm -hmm. partake in her plagues, and receive of her judgments. Come out of her, my people. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. This is Oilfield Disciple, and I will catch you guys on the next ride.